I want to show you how to build a chatbot with Gemma uh, using Keras. Uh, building a chatbot is one of the, the, the let's say, the basic applications. Uh, there is not that much to know, uh, actually, about how to do it. So let's dive right into it. Gemma is now available in uh, the Keras NLP collection, which is a collection of pre-trained Keras models. It's a one-liner to load it and you can start generating. That is what Gus said. Uh, now, please please notice that the version of Gemma I'm loading here is the Gemma se Instruct 7B. Why Instruct is the instruction fine-tuned Gemma. Because for turn-based uh, turn conversations, that is the version that you want to use. First of all, it's been uh, fine-tuned to actually be helpful in a conversation. And second thing, it has been fine-tuned to understand this conversation markup, which is very important. So that is how you mark uh, who is the user speaking and wh when it is the model speaking. And when you are building the conversation with a large language model, uh, in addition to marking your turns, the other thing you have to do is simply feedback the entire conversation to the model as context at every turn. That is how LLMs work. That is how they can react to what has been said previously. So in my code, and now we can switch to the code, I have a uh, small snippet that does exactly that. You will have access to this demo, so you will be able to see that by yourself. So the, here is where the model was loaded. I already run this part uh, before I went on stage so that we don't have to wait for the model to load. Uh, and uh, we are ready to uh, actually start talking with the model. So let's see. Um, what can I talk with this talk about? I want to talk about prime numbers. So tell me in a few words how to compute all the prime numbers up to 1,000. Well, here we go. Sivo Verastasteen and so on. Uh, fine, you can read it, read it. But I actually, I would like to see the code. Let us ask Gemma to generate the code for that. So now in Python, can it do that? Uh, it can. Here is the Python. Uh, let's see if that actually runs. Here it goes. I just copy pasted the code into a cell. And yeah, it seems to be running. Here are prime numbers from 1 to 1000. So shall we try to understand what this code is actually doing? Actually, I am going to ask Gemma to do that for me. So let's go. Thank you. It works. Can you explain the code in plain English? Let's see if it can do that. And while this is waiting, I wanted to show you the little, the little helper here that I put together called chat state, uh, which does the turn by turn marking and which does the state management. Uh, so it's it's just uh, these uh, 15 lines of code here. Uh, you can copy paste them to to your own applications. So did it say something? So here is the breakdown of the code, and it commented line by line. But outside of the code, oh, this is not very readable. So the last thing I'm going to do is ask Gemma to actually reformat it in a slightly more useful way. So great, please, can you now add those explanations as comments in the code itself? Because that's how I, how I like to read my code. So let's see if we can do that. Here it goes. Here I have the entire code commented by Gemma. I want to see if this still works. So let me copy paste it again into a new cell. Uh, one benefit is that I'm going to get a uh, syntax highlighting and I have a uh, Gemma generated code fully commented by Gemma and it still works and generates prime numbers. So can we move back to uh, the slide, please? Right. What next? We chatted, we got good results. But when you, you know, build a chatbot, sometimes you want it to have a specific voice to, to react in specific ways. So uh, for that, you usually fine tune the model. And I'm going to show you how to fine tune this model. 
to make it a little bit of fun, uh, I, I, I decided to make it on brand. My brand is pirate, so I will be fine tuning it on a pirate speak data set. R. <laughs> so two technical tricks to get there. The first one is LoRa. LoRa is low rank adaptation. It's a nifty mathematical technique that basically replaces all the big weights matrices in the model by a product of two low rank matrices. I skip the technical details, very easy to look up online. Uh, the upshot is that it reduces the number of trainable parameters, very useful for fine tuning. Second technical trick, uh, this is slightly more involved, but this model is big. I'm fine tuning the 7 billion parameters model. It's not going to fit on one accelerator, so I'm actually fine tuning it on a TPU with eight cores and I need to find a way of splitting this model across those eight cores so that it fits in memory. This is a technique known as model parallelism. It's available in Keras and it's actually building uh, behind the scenes. This is running in Keras on top of JAX and JAX and the compiler in JAX, XLA, knows how to handle this. So uh, the important part in this code is the model parallel um, API that I'm calling at the bottom. What this API does, it allows me to specify layer by layer in the model how to split it across accelerators. So basically for every block of weights that is big and cum cumbersome, I say split it along this axis and place it in those uh, TPU cores. That's what I'm doing. So back to the demo, please. I have my, so here we are. Uh, I have my pirate, data, pirate speak data set here, and I already fine tuned this model. So you, you can do the fine tuning, it doesn't take that long. It would be too long for me to do on stage. So I've, I've already done that. The fine tuning itself is here, Gemma LM fit on my data set. I'm just using the keras.fit standard, standard fit method. Uh, one thing you can see here is the number of trainable parameters. So it's 22 million parameters, uh, while I'm using uh, Gemma uh, 7B, 7 billion, which actually has 8.5 billion parameters. So that is the LoRa technique working. This reduced the number of trainable parameters. Uh, you see that the fine tuning well pr uh, went pretty well. Uh, the loss is going down. Uh, and now what I'm going to do is simply reload one of those fine tuned checkpoints and start chatting with my models. Let's see if this model can speak pirate. Ahoy there, ahoy there. And it's an answering, ahoy there, it's nice to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, nice. Well, it's, uh, so it, it's, 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 it's talking pirate. Uh, what would you like to talk about today? Well, what do you talk about with a pirate? Hmm, I guess prime numbers. <laughs> and run. Prime numbers, yeah, it's nice that you like math. <laughs> well, it's still responding in character, fantastic. So last thing I want to try is to see if this, uh, this pirate can actually generate Python code. Let's see that. So, yeah, give me, give me Python computing them primes up to a thousand. Let's see. It's computing, computing, and here we go. Sure, here with the Python code, and there is some Python code here. Last thing I want to do is, this is a live demo, so I have to check that this is actually good uh, pirate code for computing prime numbers. And yes, here we go, it's computing prime numbers. <laughs> And you can also see that it kept the pirate voice to the end. So can we switch back to the slides, please? So this is uh, what I want you to remember today. We have built a chatbot with Gemma. Uh, all you have to do is use the Gemma instruct preset and don't forget about the turn-by-turn -turn tagging. And we have fine-tuned this model. It's a pretty big model at 7 billion parameters. So you need some technical tricks. Keras has those tricks. It's uh, LoRa to reduce the number of trainable parameters and model parallelism to partition the model on multiple accelerators. Here on TPUs, it works just as well on a machine with eight GPUs or more, for example. Thank you very much.